Welcome back, everyone. This time we're going to be finding volumes of surfaces of revolution. So we've talked about volumes a bit on the last video. We saw how to find the volume of something that we could slice up like a loaf of bread and then find the volume of each little slice of bread and add those up and then in the limit that becomes an integral. And this time we want to, to do something a little more specific. We want to, to work with surfaces of revolution which have special kinds of cross sections. We'll do those with shells and washers. And so if you talk to someone who had calculus 2 several years ago, they probably don't remember the stuff from our last video about slicing up things like slices of bread. But they'll all remember doing things with washers and shells. This is a, a major topic that, that it comes up in every Calculus 2 class. So what are we going to do here? We're going to take a region that's bounded by a couple of curves, in this case, x squared and 2x, and we're going to rotate that around, let's say, the x-axis to start with. And we're going to find the volume using washers, whatever that's going to mean. So maybe it's worth taking a second to talk about what this thing looks like when this region is rotated around the x-axis. So what we have is, is a region in the plane that we're sitting there drawing on our screen, but now we're going, to, we're going to have it rotate out of the screen. So what will happen is the x-axis will stay where it is. So this point right here will stay where it is. But this region that we have will come out of the screen like it's a, a 3D shark jumping out of a, an old you know horror movie with the 3D glasses. It'll jump out of our screen and swing around until it's down here somewhere. Right? Then go back into the screen and wrap around the backside to come back out. So from the outside where this little little red dot is located, right, this would look like a big cone. Right? That it would have a, a straight edge right here and you would see another straight edge here and this would wrap around and make, make something like a cone. If my dot walked around to this side though, it would see that, well, inside was all hollow. So all of this area in here would be open and hollow. So this is like a, a cone with the stuff hollowed out of the inside. Well, the idea is we want to slice this thing perpendicular to the x-axis and when we do that, we will get a washer. So the thickness of this washer would be delta x. As we, uh, just like before, we slice, slice, slice. And the thickness of each slice will be delta x. When we rotate that little slice around, it'll can come out of the screen and then go back into the screen. And so we get a washer. And so I can pull this washer out right, and turn it a little bit so we can see it face on. So this thing will have a thickness of delta x, and it'll have an area that we can figure out from the picture. So one of the most important things to remember about, about this, this material, if you don't remember anything else, is always, 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 I mean it, always draw the picture. And then try to figure out the answer just by looking at the picture. If you try to look in the textbook, and you look through and you look for formulas that are in the little box that say if you have this kind of situation, then do this. Then you, the book will give you a formula, but the formula only works for the particular kind of setup that the book is talking about when it gives you the formula. And we're going to have, well, we're going to do this 12 different times. because There's sort of 12 different ways we could take this one region and rotate it around lots of different ways. We'll get 12 different ways of doing that from this one region. And so drawing the picture and then figuring out the answer is way easier than trying to memorize formulas for 12 different possibilities, only two of which are actually listed in the textbook, and the formulas don't exactly fit for all the rest of the possibilities. So here we've got a, we got a washer. We've got, well, it's a big circle that's colored this bluish gray, and then a hole in white has been cut out. That's where that missing stuff is inside the inside of this cone-shaped surface. So what's the area there of the bluish gray material that we have to work with? Well, that's easy enough to figure out because the area of the washer that we see there on the screen is just, well, it's two circles. So I need to find the area of that using the formula for area of a circle. 
The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So the trick is we find the area of the whole, W-H-O-L-E, the entire thing, and then we subtract off the area of the whole, H-O-L-E, the white missing part. Right? And so it's easy enough, right? The radius of the big circle, the entire big circle here, right, is 2x. The area of the smaller hole, the missing part, is x squared. And how do I know that? Right? I mean, how in the world did I figure out the x squared and the 2x? Well, it comes from looking at this picture. So the center right, of my circles is the axis that I'm rotating around. That's a huge, huge thing. If you, if you just remember that much, then you'll almost certainly get your picture correct. The center of the circles that I'm drawing is this axis that I'm rotating around. Right? So this corresponds to my center. So now, how do I know how far it is from the, the, the center, from the axis, to where I start to actually get material? Right? All through through the interior hole, H-O-L-E, there's nothing but air. Well, if I look in this picture, here's my axis, and I got nothing but air right, until I get to, oh, right there, my first curve. What's that curve? That's the x squared graph. Right? So right here right, is where I first hit stuff and not just air. So from x squared, where my dot is right now, to the axis, that's the radius of my inside hole, H-O-L-E, hole, right? Where there's just nothing but air right there. And how do I find that distance? Same way we've done with everything else, right? If I were teaching this in class where I could use my fingers on the board, I'd put one finger right here on the parabola, I'd put one finger right here on the axis, and I would say that distance right there, that is my radius of the small circle. How do I find that distance? Well, remember, it's always, this is between two points, the big number minus the small number. Big number is x squared. The smaller number is 0. Is the y-coordinates are what we're comparing, just like we were doing before when we were doing areas. So radius of the small hole is x squared. Now I move on to the, to the bigger circle, right? From the center all the way out to the end, right? That's 2x. How do I know that? Well, I look at my graph. Center of my circle is here on the axis, and I go all the way until I get to the end of the stuff. That's here on this curve. That's y equals 2x. So the distance from this spot on the curve to the axis is 2x minus 0. So the thickness of the washer is delta x. So all I have to do is take the area of my washer multiply the area of the well, part of the washer that I see, the area of these two circles, multiply by delta x. So I find the area of the big circle, that would be pi times its radius squared, pi times 2x all squared, and subtract off the area of the whole, right, the part that's missing that's just air, pi times x squared, all of that squared. So again, so how do I find the area of just the blue part? I find the area of the entire blue circle, and then subtract off the area of the white circle. What this gives me now when I add all those pieces up is a Riemann sum in the limit as I use thinner and thinner slices, let them get smaller and smaller and smaller, get more and more of them. It's exactly an integral. So I have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of pi times 2x all squared minus pi times x squared squared. Well, we can try this around a slightly more difficult axis. Let's rotate around not just the x-axis, but let's drop it down to, say, the line y equals negative 3. So that's the, the dashed line there. That's now going to be the center of my washers. Okay? That's really, really, really important. The axis will always be the center of my washer. If you remember that, it becomes really easy to draw the picture of your washer, and as soon as you have a picture of the washer drawn, then you just write down the integral. So how do I know that the inside hole here, the, that length right there, this radius should be x squared plus 3? Well, the center of the circle is exactly the axis that I'm looking at, that I'm rotating around. 
So that's my center of the circle. And from right here on the center of my circle, right here on the axis, until I run out of air and I start to run into stuff, right, that is the radius of my small circle. That's the radius of the hole. So I need to find the distance from this spot right here on the parabola to this spot here on the line y equals negative 3. Well, that's a difference in y coordinates, right? I need to find the distance between this point and this point vertically, so I subtract their y coordinates. And remember, it's always the big number minus the small number. So the big number, well, that's the point here on my parabola. That's x squared. The smaller number is negative 3. So x squared minus negative 3, or you could think of it as x squared plus 3 more, gives us x squared plus 3 is the radius of the small circle. The radius of the bigger circle, well, I go from the center all the way up here to the line. So that would be 2x minus negative 3. So the whole radius turns out to be 2x plus 3. I do exactly the same thing we did last time. The thickness of this washer is delta x. The area is pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the little radius squared. I integrate that from 0 to 2 because I start cutting up these washers at 0. I stop when I get to x equals 2. That's where my region stops. All right, so here's maybe a harder version of this. Now let's put my axis all the way up there at 5. So that's above the region. Okay? So none of the formulas in the book match this case. If you try to memorize the formulas in the book, there's no way to do this one. The only way to get this one right is to draw the picture, write down what your washer is going to look like, and then just read off the answer. It's really very easy if you just draw the picture. So let me show you. Remember, our axis is the center of the washer. So my center of my washer is here. So what's my small hole going to look like? Well, that will run from center of the, of the hole, right, right here on the axis, until I run out of air and I start to hit stuff from my region. It's this distance right here. So if I start at the center and I work my way out, the first curve I hit is the line this time, not the parabola. So what I need to find is this distance. Well, this is the distance from 5 to the line. Now, which number is bigger? five or the line. Well, I'm comparing y coordinates. y equals five is bigger than y equals 2x. Right? 2x is down here on the line. So this distance is five minus 2x. And the big hole, right? or the, the, big, the big hole, the big circle, the larger circle, its radius would be five minus x squared, all the way down to the edge of the parabola. So that looks backwards from what we did before. And of course it is, because my axis is on the other side. But if you try to, if you try to memorize how you do this, or, or work a couple of examples in the homework, and then try to guess at what the pattern is or something, you just get yourself all tangled up. This is way, way much easier to just always draw the picture. As soon as you have the picture, you can look at the picture and just read off the answer. Because now, the thickness is delta x. I'll integrate from 0 to 2 again. And I just take pi times the big radius squared. It gives me the area of the entire large circle. And subtract off pi times the little radius squared to subtract off the area of the whole. So pi times 5 minus x squared, all squared, minus pi times 5 minus 2x, all squared. OK. Then I want to switch gears a little bit and, and think about what we did in the video on finding the area between two curves. Because sometimes it was easier, in fact we used this exact same region in that video, to treat the to treat x as a function of y, to do everything sideways. Okay? So what we could do is instead of thinking of y is equal to 2x, we could treat x is equal to half of y. And instead of thinking of the parabola as y equals x squared, we treat it as x equals square root of y. Okay? So now we draw our, our cut this way. Okay? But if we rotate around the x-axis, 
then this little rectangle is going to get well rotated down here and back around. So we won't get a washer that way. We're cutting it parallel to the axis, not perpendicular to the axis, the way we did before. That's actually really important. It means we get something, something very different. Right? So if I cut it at some point y, right? I'm going to use y here as, as a, the generic point where I cut it, and then I grab that and I rotate it down out of the screen, around, and back into the screen. So now this is, this is a strip sticking out of the screen, going back into the screen. I get what we're going to call a shell. And its thickness will be delta y, because again, we're cutting it from one y value to the next. We're cutting it horizontally. So we're cutting it um, as I change y every time. So I will I'll cut it at this y, then I'll cut it at a higher y, and another y, and another y. I'm cutting it for all these different y values. So if, if I'm cutting it with different y values, the change is delta y, and the thickness will be delta y. Well, then we just unroll this shell. So again, this is coming out of the screen, and then rotating around and going back into the screen. So if I move it over here, we can get a better look at it. And then imagine taking magic um, math scissors, and we snip it, we could unroll that big cylinder that that stuck out of our screen. We unroll it. So now what you're seeing is a rectangle. Right? The thickness of the rectangle is delta y, which is now sticking out of the screen towards you. So again, this is really still a 3D object, but its thickness delta y is what's sticking out of the screen. The dimensions of this rectangle, we can read off of the original picture. So this distance right here, across the top. Well, in the original picture, that's this distance, right? the width of this rectangle over here in the original picture. That's why it's square root of y minus 1 half y, just like we were doing when we were finding areas before when we do this sideways. It's always, in this case, a difference in x coordinates. And that's always the bigger number minus the smaller number. The bigger x coordinate is square root of y right here on this curve that we're thinking of as square root of y. And we subtract off the point right here, the x-coordinate, which is 1 half y. So that's why this distance becomes square root of y minus 1 half y. Okay, this other side looks weird. Why in the world is that 2 pi y right here? Well, what is that? That was, well, the circumference of this shell as it rotated out of the out of the picture, out of the screen, toward our face, rotated around, and then stuck back into the screen and came back around. That distance as it went around it made a circle. How far did it go around? It was the circumference of that circle. And what's the circumference of a circle? It's 2 pi times the radius. Now, how do I know that the radius is y? Well, what's the center of my, my circle? As I went around over here, well, the center was right here on the axis. Remember, center is always the axis. So as I went around this axis, right, the radius was this distance from the axis up to y. So y minus 0 is my radius. So 2 pi y makes the dimension of this part of the rectangle. Altogether, I get 2 pi y times square root of y minus a half y times the thickness, which becomes dy in the limit, and I have the integral from 0 to 4. Well, I could try moving my, my axis down a little, the way I did before, move it down to, to negative 3. And what changes? Well, the width of my, of my washer there right, is exactly the same. What changed was just the circumference because the center of my, of my shell is down here on the axis at negative 3. So my circumference is 2 pi times the radius. And the radius from here to here is big number y minus a smaller number, which is negative 3. So y minus negative 3, or I could write that as y plus 3. So I end up with 2 pi times y plus 3. That's my circumference of the shell 
times in green the square root of y minus one half y, that's the width of my shell, times dy, which is my thickness, and I integrate from zero to four. Okay. Well, let's repeat this with my axis higher. Right? So I put my axis up at y equals five again. Cutting it parallel to that, I'll get shells. And when I unroll this, again, the width is still the same. The green square root of y minus one half y, but my circumference has changed. So now the center of my, of my shell is on the axis at five, right here. And so I need to find two pi times the radius. Well, the radius is the distance from the center at five to y. So big number minus small number, you know, Y coordinate here minus Y coordinate there. The big Y coordinate is five, the smaller Y coordinate is Y. So my radius of the shell is five minus Y. The circumference will be two pi Y, two, sorry, two pi times five minus Y in blue there. So my integral becomes the circumference, two pi times five minus Y times the green width, square root of y minus one half y again, and I integrate from zero to four. Well, we're about halfway through now, our, our list of the 12 possibilities. The last six will go much faster than these did, as far as video time. But one of the things that always confuses students, they get terribly, terribly confused when, uh, when they haven't done enough homework practice to get really good at this, is they've, don't, they don't know whether they're supposed to get washers or shells. And so one reason why I'm doing all 12 possibilities, doing washers and shells, cutting it along axes, the six that we just did, we, we always used horizontal axes. We're going to replay the entire thing with the same region, but we're going to use vertical axes in just a few minutes. But how do I know whether I get washers or shells? Because sometimes people think, oh, if you have Y's, then you get washers, and you have X's, you get shells, or, or vice versa, or whatever. It has nothing to do with it at all. What it really comes down to is whether we're cutting it perpendicular to the axis or whether we're cutting it parallel to the axis. If you cut your, your region perpendicular to the axis, you always get a washer. If you cut your, um, your region parallel to the axis, you always get a shell. And you might be integrating dx's or dy's with either washers or shells, either way. And we're going to see, again, as we go through all 12 of these examples, that these happen all different possibilities of whether you're integrating with x's or whether you're integrating with respect to y. How do you tell if you get washers or shells? It's whether you cut perpendicular to the axis or parallel to it. So if we try to use vertical axes to rotate around, right? So take our, um, our region here, and we're going to rotate around the y-axis. Right? So in this first example, let's cut it perpendicular to the y-axis. So the y-axis is here. Okay? So if I cut it perpendicular to the y-axis, so I have a little rectangle drawn here, then of course perpendicular to the y-axis, I'll get a washer. So all I need to do is just draw the picture of my washer. Remember, the center of the washer is the axis here at the y-axis. So I will have nothing but air. Right? This is like a basketball metaphor. Nothing but air all the way through here between the y-axis and the line, which now I think of as one-half y instead of 2x because I'm doing this sideways. So this is my small radius from x equals zero to x equals one half y. Again, difference in x coordinates. Then the bigger radius, that'll go from x equals zero all the way over to x equals square root of y. So I draw my washer picture and then I'm essentially done. If I can draw the washer correctly, then I just have to find the area of my washer, multiply by, in this case, delta y or dy when it, when it becomes an integral, and I'm done. So I'll have the integral from 0 to 4, pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the little radius squared, just like we always do when we're doing a washer. The trick is to um, look at what your picture is, figure out whether you have a washer or a shell, draw your picture correctly, and then writing down the integral is easy. Um, let's try moving this. Um, no, let's do. we did this with on the y-axis with washers. Let's try shells. 
So if I wanted to do shells around the y-axis, that means I'd have to cut it parallel to the y-axis. This is why I'm cutting it right here, parallel to the y-axis, which means I'm changing x's as I go from one step to the next. I start here and I cut all the way across, changing x's. So I'm going to be integrating with thickness delta y, which means in my integral, it should come out to be a dy. Um, oh, wait, this is a, maybe a good place to pause for a second and say, sometimes people don't expect much out of their dy at the end of an integral. They just tack on a dy because they know they're supposed to have a dy or, or a dx in there somewhere. But the dx's and the dy for all of these problems mean something. When we were finding areas, it was the width of the rectangles. Here it's the thickness of our shells or the thickness of our washers. So if you forget that or try to use the wrong letter or, or leave off your dy or don't realize what it's there for, you get all tangled up in getting the, the answer correctly. Okay, so what's going to happen here? We're going to get a shell. And if I unroll my shell, it looks something like this. So the distance between 2x and x squared right, on my graph turns into this height of my rectangle when I unroll it. The length of this rectangle, well, that's the circumference of my shell. As my shell will start here, rotate out of the screen, go over here, back into the screen, and come back around. So the circumference of a big circle is 2 pi times the radius. The center will be at the axis, so the radius has to be x from 0 here to x. So all together, I end up with an integral that's 2 pi x times 2x minus x squared times the thickness dx, and I integrate that from 0 to 2. So let's move my axis over a little bit. Let's go to uh, x equals negative 3. Well, if I stick with shells, then all that changes is my circumference will have grown just a bit. Right? So now my circumference would be 2 pi times the radius, but the radius isn't the distance from the y-axis to here. It's the distance from the axis I'm rotating around, which is over here at negative 3. So the center of my circle is at x equals negative 3. I'm cutting it here at x. So big number at x minus smaller number at negative 3. x minus negative 3, or more simply, x plus 3, that's my radius. So my circumference becomes 2 pi times x plus 3. The uh, distance between the two curves there stays the same. This is all my green 2x plus x squared. So the whole thing looks just like it did before, only I have a slightly different circumference. I'm going to integrate this from 0 to 2. 2x minus x squared, then the circumference 2 pi times x plus 3, then the thickness dx. If I want to do this with washers, well, I'd have to cut this perpendicular to the, to the vertical line x equals negative 3. If I cut it perpendicular to that vertical line, that means I'm going to be cutting it where y is what's changing. The thickness of each of these washers will be delta y. So I'm going to end up, end up with an integral with a dy at the end. So how do I draw my washer? Well, Here's my axis, that's the center of the circle. I go from the center of the circle through the air until I start to hit stuff. That happens, well, from here to here. What's the bigger number? Well, it's the line. That's where x is equal to 1 half y. Here's where x is equal to negative 3. So this distance is 1 half y minus negative 3. Then the bigger circle, its radius is square root of y minus negative 3. So altogether, this gives me an oh, area of the big circle, pi times square root of y plus 3, right, if I make the two minuses into a plus, square root of y plus 3, all squared, minus the area of the smaller whole, pi times 1 half y plus 3, all squared. Okay. Last two examples, let's move the, the axis all the way over to the right now. And we'll do this last one with washers, one, one last washer example. 
Again, using washers, and I'll have to cut perpendicular to the, to the axis, which means that I'm going to be integrating with respect to y again. But now when I draw my circle, well, how do I find the distance between um, my axis and the first place I actually run into substance instead of just air? That's this part. So the bigger number is 5, x equal to 5. Smaller number is x equal to um, square root of y. So that's why my hole runs from the center to here. That distance is 5 minus square root of y. On the other hand, the big radius goes from 5 all the way over here to 1 half y. So big number is 5. The smaller number is x equal 1 half y. So the radius of this circle, the big one there, becomes 5 minus 1 half y. And once I have the picture of the, of the washer drum, I'm essentially done. I get the integral of pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the little radius squared. Comes the thickness dy, and I integrate that from 0 to 4. Okay, so last example now, use the same x, the same axis, but do it with shells. So my axis here is vertical. If I use shells, that means I have to cut it parallel to the line x equals 5, which means I'm cutting it with different x's. So the thickness of my shells will be delta x, and my integral when I'm done should have a dx in it. So how do I um, read off the dimensions of my shells? Well, one part's easy. This distance between the two curves is still 2x minus x squared, the way it has been in several examples. But now the circumference, as my shell goes all the way out, comes back around my axis at 5. Center of my axis is here at 5. So I need the distance from 5 to x. So 5 is the big number. x is the smaller number where I'm cutting it. So my circumference is 2 pi times 5 minus x. That leaves me with an integral, again running from 0 to 2, because that's where the x numbers start and stop in my region, of 2 pi times 5 minus x times 2x minus x squared times my thickness dx.